Blessed be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name when I'm found in the desert place, though I walk through the wilderness. Blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Blessed be your name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's all as it should be. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name on the road marked with suffering. Though there's pain in the offering, blessed be your name. Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to praise. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your You give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name. You give and take away, you give and take away, my heart will choose to say, Lord, blessed be your name, blessed be the name. Blessed be your name, blessed be the name of the Lord, blessed be your glorious Your love is amazing, steady and unchanging. Your love is a mountain firm beneath my feet. Your love is a mystery, how you gently lift me. When I am surrounded, your love carries me. surprising I can feel it rising all the joy that's growing deep inside of me every time I see you all your goodness shines through I can feel this God song rising up in me me. 
makes me sing. Your love makes me sing. Your love makes me sing. Good morning and welcome to Wilt. Boulevard United Methodist Church. My name is Sarah Hamilton. I am not the pastor, um, but I am glad to be here, and I am glad that you are here. Uh, We do have some good news, um, because I don't know where else to share it um, in the service. Um, So Tuesday night, the council will be meeting with an interim pastor uh, who will be serving half-time with us um, until a full-time pastor can be found. So Uh, Relief, yeah. Yeah. So thanks be to God, relief is in sight. um, And we'll hopefully have... I won't touch that anymore. No touchy. Um, Hopefully we will have more information next week. Um, It is... (laughs) Do not shame Hannah. It is not. It is not. Um, you are welcome here in this space, however you connect to God. If that's standing and waving your hands, please do so. If that's bowing your head and keeping quiet, please do so. If it's catching a nap, please do so. Um, That's what this space is for. Um, Killing time until Jay gets back to the piano. Um, Now we are going to uh, start our worship with an old Bette Midler And she covered for somebody else. I can't remember her name. Julie Gold, maybe? Anyway, from a distance. From a distance, the world looks blue and green. And the snow-capped mountains white. From a distance, the ocean meets the stream, and the eagle takes to fly. From a distance, there is harmony, and it echoes through the land. It's the voice of hope, it's the voice of peace. It's the voice of every man. From a distance, we all have enough, and no one is in need. And there are no guns, no bombs, and no disease, no hungry mouths to feed. From a distance, we are instruments marching in a common band, playing songs of hope, playing songs of peace. They're the songs of every man. God is watching us. God is watching us. God is watching us from a distance. From a distance, you look like my friend, even though we are at war. From a distance, I cannot comprehend what all this fighting is for. For a distance, there is harmony, and it echoes through the land. It's the hope of hopes. It's the love of loves. It's the heart of every man. It's the hope of hopes. It's the love of loves. This is the song of every man. And God is watching us. God is watching us. God is watching us. 
watching us from a distance. God is watching us. God is watching. God is watching us from a distance. So the welcoming affirmation is on the screen, so you can join me. Better? Whatever your race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, or economic situation, you are welcome here. Whatever your age or ability, background or belief, I am welcome here. Whatever your relationship status or family structure, we are welcome here. No matter who you are or what you've done, I welcome you in the name of Christ. And we can take just a minute to welcome each other in the name of Christ. Continue our praise songs with number 451 in the red book, Be Thou My Vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to me save that thou art. presence my light be thou my wisdom and thou my true word I ever with thee and thou with me Lord and thou only first in my heart great God of heaven my treasure 
God of heaven, my victory won. May I reach heaven's joys, O bright and sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever befall, still be my vision, O ruler of all. And then to prepare for prayer, we will sing number 420 in the Red Book, Breathe on Me, Breath of God. Breathe on me, breath of God, fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Take time to prepare our hearts, our minds, our spirits for prayer, whether that be fixing your posture, opening your hands and heart. If you are a head bowed, eyes closed kind, please do so. Let's go to God in prayer. Oh God, when we would rush, to get all of our to-dos done. You call to us to turn and notice your compassion, burning for those living in misery. When we hesitate, you ask us to remove all we think that protects us from the fire of your justice so we can draw closer to your heart's warmth. You are the one we search for. And when we become stumbling blocks to you and your plan, you polish our stony resistance so we can become smooth pebbles on the path to your kingdom. And when we would tell you how we think you should bring about yours or, honestly, our hopes and dreams, you show us your heart, broken for the lost and the last, so that we will look to their needs instead of just thinking about our own. You are the one who leads us to freedom. When we believe we cannot speak about your peace and hopes, you give us words that just spill out of our heart. When we put our hands over our eyes, afraid to look at the suffering around us, you fill our hands instead with grace, sending us to serve your children. You are the one who teaches us new ways. We 
And God, when we have plans abounding, you remind us that we are yours. We take a few moments of silence to hear your plans and to offer our worries, our troubles, our thanks to you. Merciful God, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, who taught us to say, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Scripture this morning is from the book of Exodus, chapter 3, verses 1 through 15. Moses was keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmasters. Indeed, I know their sufferings. And I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of that land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the country of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites. The cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppressed them. So come. I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, If I come to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus shall you say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations.
I'm sorry about all the Jebusites and Hezites and all the, the hard words. You did great. Oh, let's pray. Uh, merciful God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations and thoughts of all our hearts be pleasing in your sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So do you remember when you first discovered reading? Some of us have to go further back than others. Um, of course, when you discovered reading, you may have either loved it or hated it. That's okay, I guess. Um, I remember some of the things that stick out to me when I first started reading um, was when I graduated to chapter books or uh, books that didn't have pictures in them. I thought I was so big and smart, and it was like a huge, it was a big deal. Um, I remember um, I always had a book out of the school library, um, and I have this distinct memory of being at my grandparents' house on their um, 1970s brown floral couch, um, and reading a book, about, uh, it's one of those Ramona B. Quimby books. And um, I remember it being the first book that I ever laughed out loud while I was reading it. I also remember the, I think it was the Mark Twain Award for it. Help me out, young adult. Yes. Um, I remember there was a book um, about orphan trains. Remember the orphan trains back that used to take orphans from, um, like the, from the East Coast, the city, to out west to someone who would adopt them or enslave them, either way. Um, and I remember that being the first book that made me cry. Yeah. Um, and I, a, as a young reader, I also remembered feeling very unsatisfied when a book ended. Like, wait, it's over? But what happens next? We, one time we went to a, uh, we took a, like a field trip to, CM, it used, was CMSU at the time, now UCM, over in Warrensburg. And they had some children's authors there, some sort of festival. And I remember I had just finished reading one of her books. Um, and I had the same question for her that about half of the other kids in the group did too. Well, what happens next? What happens to whoever it was after this episode? What, what, what was going on then? I didn't like to be left hanging. I guess I just wanted their entire life story in one book. Um, thankfully, I've gotten older, but I still go for series instead of one-off books because I like that character development. Um, and of course, her answer was just as unsatisfying as you th think it might be. It was, um, kind of reminds me of Jesus. Um, well, what do you think happens next? But I'm not the one who wrote the book. And it reminds me of Moses in today's scripture. So at the end of Genesis, the Israelites were in the midst of a famine and in order to get some food, they voluntarily sold themselves into slavery to the Egyptians. I can't imagine what level of desperation that required, but they did it. And so that's how the Israelites came to be in Egypt. And then if you remember the story of Joseph, Joseph kind of insinuated in, in himself into Pharaoh's household by interpreting some dreams for him. And he became kind of a, an in-house advocate for the Israelites in the midst of Egypt. Um, but at the beginning of Exodus, the book of Exodus, like within the first eight verses, Joseph dies. Okay. So then... A new pharaoh comes to power, and you know how it is 
with people who have absolute power, there's a lot of insecurity underlying their actions and their authority. They like to project a good game, but underneath they're like worried about everything. And so this new Pharaoh had that very same response. He was like, I see all of these Israelites. There's a lot of them, and maybe more of them than us. So maybe they're planning an uprising, and if there's ever a war, they might join up with our enemies, and all hope is lost. Okay, Pharaoh, if you say so. So he decides that he's going to encourage slash order the Egyptians to treat the Israelites more harshly, because why not? So um, that leads to oppression, um, some seriously deadly working conditions, and eventually, of course it does, leads to attempted genocide of the Israelite baby boys. He orders, the, he calls in a couple of midwives and says, hey, if you go attend to an Israelite woman who's having a baby and she has a boy, toss it into the river course the midwives were like uh no um they didn't do it <laughs> when i really like this it, it this reminds me of being shrewd as uh serpents serpents and innocent as doves um they said when they when the pharaoh found out that they weren't doing it they said he called the midwives in and said what's going on why aren't you you know um killing these boys like you've been told and it's these israelite women they're so hardy and healthy that by the time I get there, they've already had the baby. I can't do anything about it then. Yeah. Anyway, has nothing to do with the story, but I like it. Um, so, um, and this is where Moses enters into the story. So for about the th first three months of, of Moses' life, um, his mom is able to hide him. But... At about three months, he's getting a little bit bigger, probably a little more vocal, um, maybe starting to move around a little bit. I don't know, never had kids. Um, but so during the day, he puts, she puts him in a little basket, right, and hides him in the rushes by the river so that um, if somebody came to her house, no, not my kid, you know, that sort of thing. Well, of course, it doesn't end that easily. Um, one day when Moses was hide, being hidden, the um, Pharaoh's daughter comes by and notices this baby. And instead of saying this is a boy, it's an Israelite boy, she knew it was an Israelite, instead of killing it, she's like, I'm going to take it home with me and he'll be my boy. Okay. Uh, so Pharaoh's da daughter discovers him and then adopts him and hires his mom to be his nurse. So that works out well. Moses grows up in the palace, but doesn't forget his origins. So one day, Moses is walking around doing his thing, um, being all important, and he notices um, an Egyptian treating a Hebrew slave badly. Okay? And instead of just standing by and watching or walking on by and saying, not my problem, Instead, he stops it. <laughs> he also kills the Egyptian. Um, little, no, no pun intended, but a little overkill there. Um, and then he buries him in the sand. So he kills a guy and tries to hide the body. But first, the text tells us he first checked to make sure nobody was looking. And so he thought he had gotten away with it. Well, the next day, he saw two Hebrews fighting each other. And he goes over and like, what are you doing? Don't you have enough problems? And they said to him, well, what are you going to do to us? Kill us like you did that Egyptian? Yeah. Moses is like, uh-oh. I better make myself scarce. So he flees the country and goes to Midian, which is basically across the Red Sea. It's the place where they end up with Mount Sinai and all that. So he flees to Midian, um, ends up as a shepherd, um, kind of weasels his way into a marriage, and ends up a shepherd for his father-in-law. 
So that's where he is, where we start today. He's sending his father-in-law's flock. Um, and I'm not really sure how well, uh, how good of a shepherd he was, because um, it seems like he followed the flock instead of the flock following him. But whatever happened, the flock um, leads him to this infamous bush that does not burn, um, where Moses encounters God. So that's where we are. That's how we get to today's passage. Long lead up, sorry. So God starts talking out of this bush, and Moses starts off well. He doesn't run away. Um, he doesn't um, act all scared or whatever. He just says, oh, hi. Like, the bush starts calling his name, and he's like, well, I'm right here. Okay. Um, and so God says, this is holy ground. Take off your sandals. Um, that was a way to remove kind of the barrier, a symbolic m removing of the barrier between God and Moses. Um, so it covers his face because, you know, it, it doesn't go well when you actually look straight at God. Um, and so God lays it all out. He's like, this is who I am. I am the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And I am here because I have observed the suffering of the Israelites in Egypt and it's starting to bother me. My initial thought is just now. I mean, it's been going on for a while. So God lays out his identity, establishes the purpose. Um, I have observed the suffering, and I want to act, and lays out the action. So I'm going to act. I'm sending you, Moses. And then all of a sudden, Moses becomes very human again. Uh me? Who am I? And I bet you in the, th in the back of his head he's thinking, you know I'm wanted for murder there, right? And God does the thing, oh, don't worry, I'll be with you. Uh-huh. Helpful. Um, and Moses tries again, but, but if I go to the Israelites, how are they going to know that it's you who sent me? How are they going to know that I'm legit? And this is how I know that God and Jesus are related. Because you get this weird, I am who I am answer. Super helpful, God. Appreciate that. Now, there have been books written on this I am who I am thing. Um, I am, it could be, could be I am who I am, it could be I, I will be who I will be, or I am who I will be, or the one I saw this week that I liked, I am the one who causes things to pass. I can get on board with that one. That goes a lot better than I am who I am. It's kind of like that saying, it is what it is. What does that even mean? But there are so many questions in this story. The first one was, what does I am who I am mean? The second, if God had been watching the Israelites suffer all this time, why wait so long to do something? I mean, that's the cl classic question, right? Why doesn't God intervene when bad things happen? A third question, why did Moses say yes? I mean, he is wanted for murder. He's back where God is sending him. And later he does, if you keep reading in the story, he comes up with all the what-if questions that you try to use to get out of something. Well, what if this happens? And what if that happens? He tries, but ultimately he goes, and after a few plagues, he is successful. And fourth is, why can't I get the special effects like a burning bush when God wants to talk to me? Why do I have to sit in the quiet and wonder if it's actually God speaking or me just bouncing ideas around in my head? 
why can't I get the burning bush? Those are good questions, right? I saw, I've seen some head nodding. Good questions. Yeah, I don't know either. And what I've decided is that's just faith. Faith is believing and following and persevering despite the question. And that resonates, doesn't it? We all have questions, personal, communal. But we can't just end on questions, right? Got to be some kind of good news I hear. Well, I found some. The good news is that when people suffer, God knows. When you're struggling, God knows. When you hurt, God knows. And when we wish that God was Harry Potter and would just wave a magic wand and make things right now, in all reality, God may have already put things into motion. Maybe Moses is on his way to help you out. Sounds like he is on Tuesday. It's not immediate relief. It's not going to happen quickly. But God sees you, sees us, suffers with us until that relief arrives. And then on the other hand, you or we might be somebody else's Moses. Maybe God did send a burning bush and you just missed it. Sure, I did. I'm not very observant. You might be somebody else's Moses, bringing relief to untold suffering. Or maybe just Helping somebody through a rough time. So, be on the lookout for the subtle and maybe not so subtle signs. And be sure to stop and listen. Because God's there. God knows. Thanks be to God. Amen. I loved the song earlier, the From a Distance. Um, and I just have, I have one, one, one slight theological problem. I don't believe God is watching from a distance. I believe that's why Jesus was here. I believe that the Spirit walks with us and doesn't just observe our suffering from a distance. And so we approach this table that reminds us just how close Jesus is. So let's offer our prayer of great thanksgiving. God, we give you thanks that you are among us and with us, not from a distance, but in our midst. We thank, for, thank you for all the times that you have interceded for us and we didn't even know what happened. We thank you for the stories of faith given to us in Scripture, passed down to us 
through generations, reminding us of just how close you are. And we remember that night that you shared with your disciples where you broke bread and and everybody took a piece and remembered you and your sacrifice for us. And with this cup, we remember that they shared from a common cup, reminding us every time we do it of the gift that you poured out on us and we continue to pour out for the world. God, we pray that your spirit pour out on us and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world, the body of Christ redeemed by his blood. And by your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one with all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast together at that heavenly banquet. Through your Son and through the Holy Spirit, we pray. Amen. The breaking of this bread, the sharing of this bread, it is a reminder. We're doing this in remembrance of Christ and remembrance of how he was in the world, how he acted for us, how he acts for us. And this is the cup of forgiveness, that when we fail to act, we get to try again. This is not our table as a Methodist church, or a local congregation, this is Christ's table. Everybody in this space is welcome. Well, uh, where's Chrissy? Chrissy will come up and help me serve, um, and then uh, you'll come by way of the central aisle and then go to your seat by the side aisle if you want to kneel. Um, please feel free. But Chrissy, come on up. table is prepared. Come to the table of grace. Come to the table of grace. This is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table of grace come to the table of peace come to the table of peace this is God's table it's not yours or mine come to the table of peace Say. 
table of joy. Body of Christ, given. come to the table of grace. Body of come to the table of grace. Of this is God's table. It's not yours or mine. Come to the table of grace. Let's pray. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves for others. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our closing hymn, when Jay first picked it earlier this week, I wasn't so sure, but as I wrote my, my sermon, I was like, hey, this actually fits. Um, uh, number 593, uh, Here I Am, Lord. Um, it's it talk, the first part is God saying, I see you. And then it's us saying, okay, we're going to go for you. So let's uh, stand as we... Oh, uh, one, offering comes at the end of that. That's all I'll say. Okay, let's stand and sing. I, the Lord of sea and sky... I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright, who will bear my light to them, whom shall I save? Peace. 
speak my word to them. Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is it I, Lord? I have heard you calling in the night. I will go, Lord. If you Strong to God be the glory forever. 